The Fujifilm X-H2S is a fast shooter, faster than the Z9, faster than the Alpha 1, and faster than the R3. Details coming up, but first I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. According to Patrick over at Fuji Rumors, the Fujifilm X-H2S, that 26 megapixel APS-C censored camera, a camera capable of 6K video, can shoot at 40 frames per second. That's right, 40 frames per second. Now that is faster than the R3, that is faster than the Alpha 1, and that is faster than the Nikon Z9, but let's do a little bit of a reality check. Keep in mind, this is 40 frames per second with a 26 megapixel sensor. The Nikon Z9, we know this because the camera's been released and we've got information to back it up, has a 47, sorry, 47, a 45.7 megapixel sensor shooting lossless at 20 frames per second produces 1.2 gigabytes per second. That's right, 1.2 gigabytes per second. Now, we go much faster than that. You're not going to be able to find a CF Express Type B card fast enough. As it is, the Angelbird AV Pro Mark IIs can do just under 1.5 gigabytes per second, 1.48 gigabytes per second. That's minimum sustained write speed. So with the Fujifilm X-H2S, what we don't know about that 40 frames per second is, is it lossless? Um, it, what's the hit rate like with autofocus? There's so many things going into it that we need to know. Uh, but I like to use the Nikon Z9 as an example because we've got the information from it. 1.2 gigabytes per second at 20 frames per second on a 45.7 megapixel sensor, lossless. So the Fujifilm, is it lossless? Um, either way, 40 frames per second is an awful lot. I'm pretty happy with 30 frames per second. It's when you're trying to shoot anything, like for example, with my 100 millimeter f2.8 macro, whenever I'm shooting insects or anything that's moving fast and I'm trying to get up close, a high frame rate works. It's also great for any sort of other fast action. But there's a certain, the quality matters a lot too. And there's an awful lot here that we don't know. And this is the thing about rumors. And I've said this many times before, we can get excited about these specifications. I mean, 8K UHD on the X2, 6K up to 30 frames per second, maybe 60 frames per second on the X-H2S. And all these other specifications we're hearing about this camera, backside illuminated stacked sensor, they sound really, really good, but there's a whole lot more information that we don't have that can either make this, wow, that is truly impressive. It's putting out a data rate lossless, very similar to what the Nikon Z9 can do. And it's certainly possible. Let's take a look at the Z9, 45.7 megapixels. Well, this camera has 26, so it's, not quite half, but it's 20 frames per second, or so 40 frames per second, so it's double. That would actually put the data rate, if it was lossless, higher than that of the Nikon Z9, which would make it somewhere between 1.2 gigabytes per second and 1.3 gigabytes per second. And that's an awful lot of data. Now, what are the card slots gonna be? If they're gonna be not CF Express Type B, and I think the X-H2 is gonna be UHS card slots, dual UHS-2 card slots. That means it's going to be a V90. And I don't think it's going to come anywhere close to a 1.3 or a 1.2 gigabytes per second. So that has me believing that that 40 frames per second isn't lossless. It's a lossy frame format. But still, um, for most of us, for ordinary photographers and filmmakers, it's probably not going to be a, a deal breaker. And I'm pretty sure that the X-H2S will also have lossy, sorry, lossless modes as well for when we're shooting stills. But still, Incredible camera these are shaping up to be. We're just, what are we, a week away? Just uh, just over a week away from the announcement on May the 31st, 2022 at the Fujifilm X Summit. I'm really looking forward to this. And of course, in about a week or less than a week, we're getting the Canon announcement of the Canon EOS R10 and the R7. Now the R10 we're thinking is gonna be more or less a replacement of the M50 rather than the M6 or the 90D, even though Canon has discontinued the M6 Mark II. So curious there. And of course the R7 is supposed to be a successor in spirit, mind, body, and everything to the Canon 70 Mark II, which came out in 2014 and has since stopped being produced for a very, 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 very long time. It's just incredible how long we've gone without a successor to that. But there were plans for a 70 Mark III as a DSLR. There was also plans for a Canon 5D Mark V but as soon as 2020 hit, that changed everything. And when Canon saw the success of the Canon EOS R5 and the R6, um, they knew that mirrorless is where they needed to be. And they pretty well stopped any further DSLR uh, development 
on anything at the time. They did release the 1DX Mark III, a one series camera, the last of the DSLRs, but uh, yeah, the DSLRs, those days are done. Um, and Canon was one of the last of the holdouts, although they are still selling an awful lot of DSLRs. You'd be surprised at how many DSLRs Canon is still moving around the world. Anyhow, if you want to stay up to date on the latest news and information regarding the Fujifilm X-H2S, the HX2, or the Canon R10, R7, or any other camera, go ahead and subscribe. But make sure you choose all notifications because by choosing all notifications, as soon as I publish a video, you're going to get dinged letting you know I've just published a new video so you can stay up to the date, up to date on the latest camera news and information. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon. The Fujifilm X-H2S is a fast shooter, faster than the Nikon Z9, faster than the Sony Alpha 1, and faster than the Canon EOS R3. Details coming up, but first I encourage you to subscribe and choose all notifications so you're kept informed on the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. According to Patrick at Fuji Rumors, the Fujifilm X-H2S, that camera that can shoot 6K up to 60 frames per second, that has a backside illuminated stack sensor, that's got a sensor resolution of 26 megapixels, is going to be able to shoot at 40 frames per second. It's pretty staggering, 40 frames per second at 26 megapixels. Now the backside illuminated stack sensor will help being able to move that amount of data, but there's so much more that we don't know. When it comes to rumors, and I've said this many times again, they're half-truths. By the nature, we're only getting a limited amount of information. So 40 frames per second, is that at 26 megapixels, or is it at 20, 13, or some other number? I used the Nikon Z9 in the beginning of this video to talk about how it's slower than the Fujifilm X-H2S, and it is, it shoots at 20 frames per second. But that 20 frames per second is at 45.7 megapixels, lossless, and it's 20 frames per second, producing a total amount of data in transmission at 1.2 gigabytes per second. And that data in transition has to go somewhere, and using an Angelroot AV Pro Mark II, well, that card can take a minimum sustained write speed of 1.48 gigabytes per second, so the storage can handle it. Now, looking at the Fujifilm X-H2S, from rumors, we're supposed to be getting two UHS-2 card slots. So even if they're V90 cards, they're not going to be able to approach the, the ability to take that amount of data, 1.2 gigabytes per second, and be able to put it right onto a V90 SD card. At 40 frames per second, I don't think it's going to be lossless, and I don't think it's going to be full sensor at 26 megapixels, but we'll just have to wait and see. Either way, 40 frames per second is pretty amazing even if it is at a lower amount. Now, the Nikon Z9 that I was using as an example here can shoot at 120 frames per second as well, but again, it's not lossless, and it is at 11 megapixels, which for social media is more than fine. And this is really where it depends on what you're looking for in a camera. Are you looking for a camera for social media? Are you looking as a photographer for wildlife, weddings, or events? What are you looking for? It re will really determine whether a capability like this at 40 frames per second is useful to you and whether lossless or lossy even matter and whether it's at the full sensor readout of 26 megapixels. I have no doubt that the processor and sensor can move this amount of information, but where I think the bottleneck is going to be is in the storage. Now it could still capture 1.2 or 1.3 gigabytes worth of information because if we look at 40 frames per second at 26 megapixels, it's gonna produce somewhere between 1.2 and 1.3 gigabytes of data and that's an awful lot. So it will depend on the buffer size as to how many shots we can get off before it's not gonna let you shoot anymore. So you might be able to get 10 shots or 20 shots off, or I don't even know if we could get 40 shots. It would have to be a pretty big buffer. So you, so you see the problem I'm having here right now. It's pure speculation. Even if it's confirmed that it's gonna have 40 frames per second, we just don't know the other information. And it sounds really, really great as does 6K video at up to 30 frames per second. But again, is that IPB? Is that all I? Is that raw? The information we're getting here in the rumors, while they sound really, really good, they are half-truths. And it's the specifications behind each of these that will really tell us how good it is, how amazing it is. What about the heat dissipation? Uh, we were talking on the weekend, uh, Patrick had put out a couple of posts about how the Fujifilm X-H2S will be coming with an accessory that fits on right behind where the LCD normally is. So the LCD would flip out, you'd put this in there, and it's a fan that helps keep it cool. And I think me and Patrick are of the same belief. This isn't because it's gonna overheat after a couple of minutes. This is just to allow extended recording. 
And if you're going to be working in the tropics and you want to be able to record an hour, two hours, or 30 minutes without having to worry about your camera overheating, this is a great way of providing insurance against that. But again, we don't know the information. How long can we record in the basic frame rate at full HD, at 4K, at 6K before we have any sort of overheating? Does it do 6K oversample 4K? There's so many details here that we just don't have. But if you go ahead and subscribe and choose all notifications, as soon as I have the information, I'm going to put out a video. And by choosing all notifications, as soon as I put out a video, you're going to get notified. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.